I'm letting you know that I'm going to be doing my work. And you've got a lot of choices. I, I'm really honored that you chose us. So I really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to take care of you and your family. So if you, uh, I want to invite you to the business center. And we'll go over here and get you out here. Sounds good? Sounds great. Oh, come on, everybody. All right, well, you just relax a minute. I got a little bit of paperwork to do, and then I'll be right with you. All right, here's my car. I want to, like I said, my name's Frank. Um, if you need anything at all, buddy, please call me um, after you leave here. My, my cell number's on there. Please don't hesitate um, to do so. Um, I have three main responsibilities, okay? And those responsibilities are, the first thing is, I'm going to make sure that the name is titled correctly on your title. I'm going to check the facts and figures that you went over with your, uh, with your sales consultant. Secondly, any questions you have at all, please ask me. I want to be able to answer all your questions so you feel good leaving here. If I don't have the answer, I'll get the answer for you before you, before you take off. In return, I'm going to ask you some questions. I want to, you know, get to um, what's most important to you, any concerns, you know, that, that you have. So I'll do that. Last thing I'll do, print your paperwork up, we'll sign, pop it in a nice little envelope, get you on your way and join your new truck. How's that sound? Sounds great. Awesome. So is this your first time here with us? The yeah. first time you're buying? Awesome. Well, I, like I said, I really appreciate that, man. Sorry, there's like one more thing here. Let me um, explain to you kind of what you're in for uh, here, what it's going to be part of. It's really, really, really important to my general manager that you have overall customer satisfaction. I mean, you, you hear that all the time, but it really, really is important. So, um, some of the of my previous customers, um, their hopes were to have the, the most enjoyment of their vehicle in use with the least amount of aggravation and the lowest cost of ownership. Is that something that you'd be interested in as well? Absolutely. Okay. Actually, what we've done is we've actually... Um, surveyed a, a ton of owners to see about the ones that have complete ownership satisfaction to try to see what's the difference between that and someone who didn't really have a great uh, you know ownership you know experience well while doing this it came down to these three key factors kept coming up and um, those three factors is what I kind of want to go over with you uh, to kind of explain to you what will either give you an overall complete satisfaction or or not can do that? Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, these, let me grab one more. Let me see here. Let me see what's going on, unfortunately. Yeah. We'll just do the back of this one. Now, when you're, let me draw something up here for you because I want you to be able to have a visual of it. This side is going to represent uh, money. So you, you have a $40,000 truck. Some zeros at about the halfway point. And then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is going to be years. And then we're going to go five years, but just as an example. So when you leave here today, William, <clears throat> what do you think is going to happen to the value of your vehicle? Do you think it's going to go up in value or, or will it lose value? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it does. Now, I, um, I always ask my customers, would you like to, I, you know, I, I think you said you'll probably keep the car around five years. At that five-year point, when you trade it in or sell it, are you hoping to get the most money for it or just whatever you can get? Uh, the most, of course. Well, yeah. I mean, it's kind of silly, but, you know, every time I ask that question, 100% of my customers say the same thing. They say, oh, well, I want the most money. I mean, obviously. 95% of them fail to do that. And 5% of them are able to get thousands of dollars more than those 95%. And that's what I want to go over with you and explain to you. Um, you know exactly how that happens. Okay. okay. So, so the um, the fact that you know that your car is going to go down in value. Do you know what, the, know what that's called? No. That's called depreciation. Okay. Now, NADA 
says that in the first three years, your vehicle is going to lose about 50% of its value, okay. and it's a lot. So we're going five years here. So what's going to happen here is from here, it's going to dramatically drop around three years. It's going to go like that. Okay, that's about half of it right there. So let me go over exactly what gets you the value so you can be in that 5% club. The first thing is going to be, let me put it over here. This is depreciation. So the first thing is having your vehicle at the time that you want to trade it in or sell it in showroom condition. Okay. Now, showroom condition, it's exactly how it sounds. If you notice, our pre-owned vehicles that are inside the showroom are pristine. I mean, there's no dents, no dings, um, there's no stains and you know, scuffed wheels. It has to look like it's in, in showroom condition. So that's the first thing that allows you to be in the 5%. <laughs> um, the second thing is to have proof of your maintenance records. So what that means is, let me, let's say you were buying a car. There's two identical cars, okay? One guy says, well, from the time I bought it to today, here's all the things I had done to it. I had it maintained when um, the, fa the factory said I should. On time, I had all my scheduled you know, maintenance and this thing's been taken care of and that's why it runs like a top and it's gonna run for you for a long time exactly the same. Other guy says, well, I mean, yeah, I, I did my own oil changes, and it's, it, it, it's good. I mean, it's, it, it'll be fine. I mean, which one do you think is going to be worth more, and which one do you think you'd buy? The first one. Exactly, yeah, because it just gives you peace of mind. So to, to have all that proof of, uh, of, of maintenance is going to really help you. Now, you're, uh, you said you were going to have your maintenance done here with us? Yes. Okay, awesome. This is going to be an easy one, then. Every time you come in for maintenance, they're going to have it logged, and then when you're ready to either trade it back into us or sell it, we'll just go to our service department and we'll say, hey, print out, you know, William's maintenance schedule, boom, it's all right there. So that's gonna be an easy one. Third is it needs to be free of any issues. What I, what I mean by issues is mechanical or electric electronic issues. So, you know, the worst thing for somebody is to come, they buy a pre-owned car, and two months later, boom, something breaks on it, something major, and it costs them a ton of money, and they're like, man, I wish I had something that showed me that this thing doesn't have any mechanical or electronic issues, you know? So that's the, the third team thing. Did, um, did your salesperson go over your warranty with you? Yes. Okay. So did he tell you, you know, as far as how many, how many miles and, you know, the three years or 36,000 mile warranty? Uh, a little bit. Okay. So yeah. So your warranty looks like this. I'm gonna need some other colors actually, but it's a three-year or thirty-six thousand. Now here's the thing. Well, you told me that you drive fifteen thousand miles a year. Um, is that gonna change, or do you think you'll probably do about the same? About the same. Okay. So in that case, we're talking fifteen thirty. Right about here is where your warranty is gonna expire. This is this is William's warranty expiration. Okay. Now, the um, the warranty on your vehicle. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but when you look at the window sticker, you know there's um, there's certain options, and there'll be a, a cost next to them. Did you notice what the cost was for the warranty? No. So it says NC next to it, which stands for no charge or no cost or whatever. Uh, Consumer Reports says it actually should stand for no choice because, you know, who do you think is paying for that warranty? I mean, you think they're throwing it in for free? No. I mean, I love the company. I love the, the, the manufacturer. Nobody says, you know what, let's just throw that in for free for the consumer. I mean, it just doesn't happen that way. It's built into the price. If you were to take that out, the price would go down, right? So this is um, the fact that there's no choice in your, in your maintenance. But let's say for a second we're talking and all of a sudden the door opens and my general sales manager says, wait, 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 don't sign any paperwork. We made a mistake. 
that's actually a factory demo. There's no warranty with that vehicle. And I go, oh man, okay. I'm like, okay, William, let's keep signing away here. Or are you going to go, wait a second. I'm not paying forty thousand dollars for the car now that I know there's no warranty on it. Would you would you want to renegotiate or would you just keep going? Renegotiate. I mean you'd probably want what, two, three, four thousand dollars off? Three at least. Okay. So three thousand dollars is what you want at least. So let me now let's say the uh, something happens magically where the um, the factory says, you know what? William, I'm gonna. I like you. I'm gonna allow you to choose when you want your warranty to start. So, you can either start it here at the beginning, um, where it's brand new and it hasn't been exposed to any inclement weather or friction or dust or you know, um, you know, any potholes. Or, if you want, we can forget this and we can start it here at year three and go through year six. If they give you a choice, which would you do? The year three year six. Obviously, because you know what happens. They're smart. This is what it looks like with maintenance, okay? This is your depreciation. Because I want you to be able to know the difference between these. And this is gonna be how your maintenance goes. So obviously, in the first three years, it doesn't really, I mean, maybe a little something, but it really doesn't kind of start going up until right about there. So, that's smart of you. For you to say, you know what, I'll start it here. What are the chances something's gonna happen when it's brand new? 36,000 miles on an engine, that's nothing, you know? That's when it really starts kinda being a concern. And this is repairs and maintenance, which is the second cost factor. And maintenance. All right, so put that here. Think the um, what do you think the third cost factor is that would cause that? I'm not too sure. Actually, it's theft. Okay. Um, theft is the third, and I mean research shows that every 23 and a half seconds there's another automobile theft. So, I mean, the time that I'm talking to you right now, by the time I end my sentence, there's going to be another car stolen. So. Um, matter of fact, when you leave here, I know you said you had some errands to run and you'd like to go to the grocery store. Um, when you go to the grocery store, are you going to just, you know, leave the keys dangling in your truck with the windows down or are you going to lock it up before you go in? Lock it up. Okay. Why are you going to lock it? So I want to sell it. Exactly. Well, you had told me that you had full coverage insurance on it and um, I, I have a bit of an insurance background. The uh, theft is a covered, um, it is covered. So. If you have full coverage insurance and theft is covered, why would you care if it got stolen? It's, I would like some of the stuff that I have in it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's true. You have stuff in it as well. That'll be gone. Um, there's um, there's statistics that show even though you're covered by insurance, the average cost to the uh, consumer that actually has a, a vehicle stolen is four thousand dollars. So. That could be stuff that you had inside. It could be if they took it and they stripped it down and took certain things out. By the time you got it back, the thing has half the equipment in it. Whatever, but it's four thousand dollars that that it would cost. Well, let's say for example you uh, you did go shopping and a thief did grab your car. Okay, so it's a beautiful vehicle you got with a navigation system, and I know your uh, sales consultant went over the little home icon. Um, did he by any chance put your address in there for you? Yes. Okay. Well, and we asked them to help you, carry your phone, stuff like that. But this is what happens. When the thief gets in, thieves are not stupid. They've done this before. This isn't their, their first rodeo. So they come down and they go, okay, boom. And they hit the home uh, icon and it goes, it brings up your address. And a little voice actually talks them right to your house. And as you're cruising, and I know you got the tinted windows, it looks awesome. Um, you know, your neighbors knew you were getting a new vehicle. so. They're not paying attention. They just figure, hey, there's William with his new vehicle. Well, they pull up to your driveway and they go, hey, let's see here. Boom. They hit this button. Your garage door opens. Pull the truck in. Hit it again. Garage door comes down. Now, they're in there. Nobody knows they're in there. They just, neighbors just assume that that's you with your new vehicle. So, the, 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 the thing is, 
they're going to look for, I mean, they're thieves, so they care about your jewelry and your flat screen TV, but they're going to first walk past that stuff and ignore it. They're going to go right into your office because they know they have a certain amount of time. You know. So what they're going to do is they're going to try and find the social security number. They're going to look for bank statements, those type of things. Because what they want to do is, um, is, is to um, commit identity theft, which they're going to, I mean, they're going to grab your flat screen and your jewelry on the way out because they can sell that one time, get money. Your identity, their identity, they can sell multiple times. They can keep selling it over and over and over and over again. So they're going to grab that. They're going to go out, and next thing you know, you know, you uh, you bought something in another state that you didn't know about. So that's the third thing is theft. Let me show you something here. We are going for five years so this is your repayment schedule we're going to go from here and this is what it looks like it goes like this and we go to five years and there we go so this is repayment or your amortization that's that blue one that's what that represents what I want you to focus in on is this area right here. Okay, do you know what that area is? Yeah. Exactly. It's the it's the um, it's your deficiency balance or gap or um, negative equity. So um, there's a couple things that can happen. I mean, eventually this is something that you're going to have to to deal with. You know, depending on when. But um, the first thing is under your control. So the first thing, let's just say um, you have it a year. Your wife gets pregnant again, and you go, man, this isn't working out. You know, we need a bigger vehicle. So year two, you go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell this and get something else. Well, this is what the vehicle's worth in year two, right around here. Which let's say that's, uh, uh, let's just say it's like twenty-four thousand dollars. So when you're ready to trade in, it's worth $24,000, but what you owe is $34,000. So there's a huge difference between what you owe and what it's worth, and that's that gap right there. So now you have a situation where you're like, well, the car's too small. I definitely need a minivan. Um, how are you gonna pay that $10,000? You stroke a check or put it in a credit card, or you roll it into a, another loan? If you can, I mean, uh, a lot of banks won't go that high, you know? That's the good news. You can control that. You might be able to say, well, we're just going to make this work, man. We're going to be crowded, but we're going to make it work. The thing you can't control is a couple things. Um, one thing we talked about was theft. Uh, the other thing would be um, if you were at a light and it turns green and you drive into the center and all of a sudden here comes the teenager texting and boom, hits you. And they told me your car out. Well, kind of good news. You're fully insured. So the way insurance companies deal with stuff like that, it's called uh, the law of indemnity. And what that is, is they need to, at the time of loss, get you back to where you were at the time of loss. So what they do is they go a 50 mile radius and they say, okay, this is the same year as Williams cars, basically the same miles, same options. And this one is 25,000 and this one is 23 and this one's 23 and this one's 25 this is 24 and they go all right 24,000 is what here you go here's your 24,000 and we have fulfilled our obligation to you because that's what we're responsible for we're not responsible for paying off your loan we're not insuring your loan we're insuring your vehicle and at the time because it depreciates 50% in the first three years at the time it's only worth 24,000 so now you don't have a choice you got to come up with $10,000 somehow okay so same deal. I mean, um, you're either going to have to stroke a check or you're going to have to put it on a credit card or, or, or do something. Now, there's a couple ways I want to show you how you can avoid this right here. Okay, the first way is you can you can make the, uh, the principal balance a lot smaller by putting a lot more money down. So instead of putting down the $2,000 you are going to put down, let's say you were to put down um, $20,000. So what will happen here is if you put, let's say 20,000 is right here and you're gonna go out, it'll probably still be in that area, but look look at the exposure now. It's much, much, much smaller. 
So if you could just put like another eighteen thousand down, this will completely. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I, I, I couldn't do it if I had to, you know. So and you, most of my most of my clients say the same thing, man. That's a lot of money, you know. So okay, the other thing you could do is we can shorten this term. So instead of going five years, if we went three years, okay, same money down. If we go from here, it's going to go here to the three years, and you're going to have once again very very little exposure. Um, now we are cutting the the term, so obviously you're going to see an increase in, in your in your monthly payment. But I mean, instead of coming up with uh, twenty thousand dollars, would you rather you know have a monthly payment a little bit higher, or would you rather come up with you know eighteen grand? Yeah. So I mean, it sounds to me like you, like you'd rather pay a little bit more a month than to have to come up with a lump sum. This unfortunately is not going to be a little bit more. This is probably going to double it, um, but it does get rid of that risk. So is that something that you think would be good for you? No. no? Okay. Well, let me go over some loss prevention um, um, tools that I have. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh yeah, you know what? Before I do that, the uh, the great thing about this, and I, I know you don't want to pay you know a whole lot of money, the great thing about this is the bank won't allow you to do that. The bank's not going to say, here, I'll lend you a ton of money even though I know you can't pay us back. Okay. What that's called is buying power. So your buying power, this is the way they, they calculate it. Um, so I was reviewing your credit report and it just shows that you make $10,000 a month. So you're obviously doing very well for yourself. Um, what they'll do is they'll split that $10,000 into two different sections. They'll do five here and they'll do five here. And this is life. I mean, this is going to be stuff, your groceries, your everyday, whatever it costs. They don't even look at that. So life is going to be there. It's not going to go away. Your installment loans are going to be over here, like your mortgage, um, student loans, other car payments. And when we added it up, that was about $4,000. <coughs> so when you take the 4000 from the five, it leaves you with $1,000. And that's your buying power. The bank's saying, you know what? We will lend money to William as long as his payment's no more than $1,000. So it shows right there, you, you actually can't afford this, uh, this payment uh, if you wanted to. Um, I understand you don't want to, but just to let you know, the bank thinks you can, okay? So let me kind of show you a couple of things we might be able to do that would avoid you having to take you know, a ton of money out of your pocket to put down or to shorten this term to where you're paying double your payment. But I, you know, it's, it's my fiducial duty to be able to explain all of this to you and to make sure that I can give you options on how you're not in this negative situation, okay? So here's what I have. I have three different ways to do this. So the first package is our preferred package, okay? What you can do at 60 months, with 4.9 at 4.9 percent, the, the same money down. We're not going to ask for any more money down. Thousand dollars. You're only looking at six seventy nine ten. Now, our most popular package is the extended preferred, and what that does is it just extends the, the term six months. Same down payment, same rate, but look six twenty four uh, and some change is all it is. Or if you wanted to be in that equity position, well, if you shorten that term to thirty six months with the same term and same money down. Well, I mean, then you're going to be at a thousand, you know, seven hundred dollars. I know you didn't want you didn't say you didn't want to do that, but I, I still wanted to show you that that's a possibility. Um, which one of these do you think will work best for you? That one. All right, buddy. I'm glad that you're protected. Thank you. Good job. Hey, thanks for helping me, man. Okay. You say that when the cameras are on. I think they heard you. I don't want to miss that. 